the testimonies that he has given to us tonight. Bless his holy name, worship him, exalt him. Oh, he's a good father. There is no one like our God. Father, you are holy. You are worthy of all praise. You are worthy of all honor. We want to thank you for bringing us into this place of Lord God. Yes, we lift up our voice to heaven. And we say, Holy Spirit, we say thank you for your presence tonight. Thank you for all that you have done and all that you continue to do in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Please be seated. Hallelujah. You welcome into this brand new month. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Tonight we have a brief message, and it is titled, Praise Yields Increase. Praise Yields Increase. When you praise God, there is an increase. Hallelujah. When you praise God. We saw it tonight. We used that psalm already. We're not going to go there. He said Psalm 22, verse 3, it says, What God inhabits in the praises of his people. He inhabits in the praises of his people. He inhabits in their praises and he inhabits in the praises of faith in chapel. Hallelujah. In the lives of all of us, our loved ones, our friends, our partners. Amen. And so let's look at Psalm 67. The psalm tells us, it's very short, seven verses. It says, God be merciful unto us and bless us and cause his face to shine upon us. Verse 2 says, that the way may be known upon the earth, the saving health among all nations. Let all the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. <laughs> Children of the Most High, we are to what? Praise God, no matter where we find ourselves. He didn't say half. He said, let all the people praise thee. And verse 4 tells us, Oh, let the nations be glad. Does that mean it's only one nation? All the nations. God wants all of us to be glad. He wants us to sing for joy. For thou shalt judge the people righteously and govern the nations upon earth. Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. And look at verse 6. That's where our topic is coming from tonight. Then shall the earth yield her increase. And God, even our own God, shall bless us. The earth, the earth, the earth, as we praise God. When we plant, we have what? An abundant harvest. Amen. Everything begins to increase as we praise God. I have been in a situation before in my life. Things were very challenging. I did not know what to do. But I knew that God inhabited in the praises of his people. And I began to praise God. I praise God from the midnight into the early hours of the morning. No exaggerations. I was so glad. The presence, the glory of God. And I'm telling you, that mountain that was so huge. <laughs> but the next day, it was completely made plain. Praise God! Hallelujah. It was made plain! I'm telling you, there's power in praises. Learn to praise Him at all times. The Son tells us, let the whole nations. Let everyone. And then he tells us in verse 7, he says, God shall bless us and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. When God blesses you, your enemy will be scared of you. Hallelujah! Yeah. They will honor God. Hallelujah. I love that scripture so much in Psalm. Matthew 5, sorry. Verse 16. I love the way it's put there. It says what? Well, Let your light so shine before men that men may see your good works and glorify who? Our Father who is in heaven. Your life will be what will shine. As you praise God, your life begins to attract people in the name of Jesus. If you do not know how to praise God, there's a problem. 
Psalm 86 verse 1. After God says he will bless us and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. And then he tells us in this psalm. Psalm 68 verse 1. He says, let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. Let them also that hate him flee before him. Hallelujah. We sing that song that says, let God arise. And our enemies be scattered. Let God arise. And our enemies be scattered. Let God arise. And our enemies be scattered. Let God, let God arise. As we praise God, our enemies begin to scatter. I have a few more verses to show you tonight. Of how your enemies will always scatter in the name of Jesus. Amen. We see that in the scriptures. And we go by that. In Habakkuk 3, verse 17 through to 19. The prophet Habakkuk was writing here. You might be here tonight at this place now and you don't know what to do. You think you have a lot of weight. You don't have no weight. Hallelujah. Because this scripture tells us, though the fig tree may not blow up. Now fruit be on the vines, though the labor of the olive may fail. The fields yield no food, though the flocks may be cut off. <laughs> and you see all the things that are not working. Do, do, meaning that these things are not working. Hallelujah. Those the flocks be cut off from the fold. But there be no herd in the stalls. Let's see what 18 says. Hallelujah. In spite of all that is not working. Yet. Hallelujah. Yet. I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. It doesn't matter what is not working. Give God thanks. <laughs> when you thank him. You are saying Lord I truly trust you. For you to praise God with all of your being, it means that you are walking in trust. Hallelujah. And in verse 19, when you begin to praise God, when you begin to rejoice, look at what the Lord is going to do for you. He says, the Lord God is my strength. He will make me, make my feet like the deer feet. Some translations will say the hind feet. And he will make me to walk on my high heels. Well, in some translation, it will tell you, it will make you to walk in your high places. So in the midst of what you are seeing right now, as you praise God tonight, hallelujah, get excited about this. As you rejoice, you begin to march into that place where God wants you to be. Every wall of Jericho in your life will be destroyed in the name of Jesus. We see in Joshua 6, verses 4 and 5, in Joshua 6, verses 4 and 5, we are told, Joshua was telling the people, he says, And seven priests shall bear seven trumpets of ram horns before the ark, but the seventh day you shall march around the city seven times. You know, a seven stands, stands for perfection, right? Hallelujah. He said, You march around seven times, and the priest shall blow the trumpets. And look at verse 5. This is praise, my, my brothers and sisters. He says, and it shall come to pass when they made a long blast with the ram's horn. Boom, 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 boom. And when you hear the sound of the trumpet, that all the people shall shout with a great shout, then the wall of the city will fall down. Hallelujah. And the people shall go up every man straight before him. Then let's look at verse 20. When you have done all this, he says, so the people shouted. When the priest blew the trumpet, hallelujah. When they blew the trumpet, and it happened that when the people heard, take note, anytime I hear this word in the Bible, the Holy Spirit always begins me. When the people heard. When the people what? Heard. People have got to hear you praise God. Amen. People have got to hear you speak for that mountain to come down. Amen. You know, the people who wrote, the, the, the anointed men and women of God who wrote the scriptures, they said, when they heard. I'm going to show you another quick example tonight. He said, they, then, and the people shouted with a great shout. 
And what happened? The wall came down. The wall came down. They didn't fight. They obeyed instruction. Second Chronicles 20, verse 20. Obedience is key. Children of the Most High God, I want you to learn to be obedient. Struggle to be obedient. I use the word struggle because people find it very difficult to be obedient. Little instructions people don't pay attention to. But I'm telling you, when you begin to follow instructions, your life will be a lot easier. Here, we are told, Joshua and the children of Judah, they were going to fight. What did they do? They came together. So they rose early in the morning and went into the wilderness of Tachar. And as they went out, Joshua stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be what? Established. Believe in his prophet and you shall prosper. The second part is where people fail. Is God has placed somebody upon you. A man or a woman of God. Don't think that person is just playing. When they tell you something, ask the Holy Spirit to confirm it for you. Hallelujah. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Saul lost it because he was no longer obedient. He became acting like a priest and that was how he lost the throne. When you believe in God, you'll be established. As you praise God, you'll be fully established. But God has put us here. In this church, the Lord has given me the mandate to speak into your life. I will not speak of my own self. I will speak of what he has said. And my prayer for you today is that you will be there to the word that you hear from the word from this altar. Amen. Prove it. Don't just take it. Look at scripture. What is the Lord saying? Is God saying this? Then it will be done. Amen. Verse 21 tells us. And when the people have consulted with the and when he had consulted with the people, that is, the king spoke to the people, they appointed what? Those who should sing to praise the Lord. And, sorry, those who should sing to the Lord and who should praise the beauty of his holiness. Hallelujah. As we praise God, we receive what? The beauty of his holiness. And as they went out before the army, they were saying what? Praise the Lord for his mercy and yours forever. They carried the ark of God. The people took the trumpet. The blue again, just like um, Joshua told them. Obedience again. They blew and what happened? Three nations came to Every time I read this story, I, you know, you, you have to come to a place whereby you understand the power of God. How can three nations come against one small nation? Two fought themselves and destroyed. One fought, two fought against one, destroyed it. Then the other two fought against themselves. And scripture says not one was left. Hallelujah. As you praise God tonight, nothing will be missing in your life in the name of Jesus. Everything you are believing God for, you will receive it in the name of Jesus. As long as you do not sin, as long as you live in righteousness, you walk in the holiness of God. Psalm 107 verses 19 through to 22, they cried out to the Lord. He said they cried out to the Lord in their trouble and he saved them from all their distress. And in verse 20, the word of God says, he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from all their destructions. Every disease, as you cry out to the Lord, as you sing to him, whatever that sickness is, whatever that pain is, whatever it is, the Lord is going to deliver you right now in the name of Jesus. And in verse 21, hallelujah, thank you, Lord. He says, all oh, that may be one, give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. And in verse 22, 
because God wants us to give thanks and we will continue to give thanks in this meeting tonight. Hallelujah. Amen. He said, let them sacrifice the sacrifice of thanksgiving and declare the works with rejoicing. So as you cry out to the Lord, as you praise him, you cry out, he heals you, and then you praise him with a sacrifice of praise, with a sacrifice of thanksgiving. Your life will no longer remain the same. Just like Paul and Silas did in Acts 16. Let's look at Acts 16 verses 25 and 26. Because of time, we're calling it short. Hallelujah. He says that at midnight, and at midnight, this is your midnight right now. Praise God. And at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing. Hallelujah. You can't beat that combination. They prayed and they started singing to God. And the prisoners were what? Listening. listening. They heard. They heard again. The people were listening. Let's look at the next verse, please. Suddenly, there was a great earthquake. So that the foundations of the prison were shaking. And immediately, all the doors were open and every chain was loose. Your praise tonight loses every chain. You see, when you're praising God, you let go of who you, you are. You forget about whatever reputation you think you have. David danced like never before. And he looked as if he was naked. And the daughter of Paul, Michael, said, look at you. And David said, what are you talking about? God has chosen me over your father. And she was the only woman in the Bible that we were told that she was barren. She did not know the act of praise. I want to tell you, David praised God seven times and he prayed three times. But you see, as a result of this praise here, let's look at verse 30. Because when these people heard, the jailer wanted to kill himself. He did not kill himself anymore. But he came out and he says, what must we do to be saved? Their praises, their prayer made people to be saved. And in the next verse, hallelujah, 32, please. Thank you, Jesus. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him, all to all who were in his house. And what happened? Let's see what happened. At the end, the verse 33. And he took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes immediately. And he and his family, they were all what? They were saved. From their prayer that led to praise, from chains being loose, from what? An earthquake. Every single one of them got saved. So we are that person today that has not received Jesus. The door is open for you to be saved tonight. Hallelujah. Receive him as your personal Lord and Savior. And know that with him, all things are possible. You will not lack anything in the name of Jesus. In Acts 4, verse 31 through to 35, because of time's sake, we're not going to go there. Said so they gathered together as the people prayed together. What happened? Look at it. They prayed. And they assembled together and were shaken. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. And they spoke the word of God boldly. As we praise God tonight, the Holy Spirit is in our midst. And we begin to go out and witness to other people. And we will speak boldly about who our God is. We will not be scared to talk about God. We will not be ashamed to talk about God. And as they gathered, the church of God was built. And you see... They came together in one accord. There was no lack in the house of God. They brought in their gifts. They brought in their offering and they worshiped God. I love the way Psalm 34 verses 9 says it. It tells us, Hallelujah. Psalm, 30, sorry, Psalm 34 verse 9. Oh, fear the Lord, you he says. There is no one to them that fear him. And look at verse 10. He says, The young lions lack and suffer what? 
Anger for those who seek the Lord shall never lack any good thing. Rise up on your feet and give God thanks. As you praise him, you will never lack anything in the name of Jesus. He's yielding an increase for you. Give him all the praise. Give him all the glory. Exalt his holy name. Magnify him because he's worthy of all 